Here we go, the 2018-19 edition of What's In My Quiver. All the fun backcountry gear from Fisher that you'll be seeing in the stores this fall. I'll tell you a little bit about them and where they fall within my quiver. I'll start off with the Ranger 102. This is on the high performance end of my quiver. Not a ski I use a ton, but perfect for going at high speeds or skiing through crud. I find the 102 width is the sweet spot for the all-around ski. While not being a powder ski, it can still hold its own, and it's still maneuverable enough to ski through pretty much any terrain. The 102 width is a little too wide, I thought, for the groomers, but it's rare that I was taking this out at the resort. I pair this up with the Tour Classic binding, I really like that feel. And for a boot, I use Fisher's new Ranger Free, which I'll talk about a little bit later. I only used this ski a few times this winter. The standout days were a powder day at Black Mountain, skied all the glades, the lift line, and really agile, fun ski. You know, this is at a 184 length. Another time was up at Tuckerman Ravine during a powder day. Really love this ski in those conditions. It's a lot more weight to carry up, but the performance you get you just, you just don't have that in your traditional lightweight backcountry ski. And the last standout day I used it was some hot pow in May, skiing in Huntington Ravine as well as Tuckerman Ravine. And that was also another standout performance for this ski. That said, it was a lot of work. This thing comes in at 200 grams per ski. So you are sacrificing a lot of that lightweight. Your, your vertical is gonna be decreased, but hopefully you make up for it with some really impressive turns. Next up is Fisher's workhorse, their flagship backcountry ski, the Hannibal. Not much to be said here, I reviewed it last year. It's just being carried over again to next season. So if you want an all around high performance backcountry ski, ticks all the boxes, it's lightweight. It's gonna be a lot of fun to tour and equally as fun to ski. I'll switch it up a little bit, go into Fisher's backcountry Nordic collection. I got my hands on the S-Bound 112s last season in a shorter length. This is a 179. I skied it in a 189 in their 98 model. I found the shorter length was a lot, a little more maneuverable and the, the width, the added width was fun for setting skin tracks. If you have room in your budget and the money, definitely add a backcountry Nordic ski into your quiver. It's a lot of fun, not to mention a soft boot is very comfortable. The highlight performance for this ski last season was Baxter State Park. I used these skis just to get in and out of the park, put my Hannibals on my sled for all my real backcountry skiing. But, you know, having the ski with the easy skin made for a quick um, surgical strike to get in the park and then getting out of the park, strip off the skin and utilize the fish scales for the way out. Again, very comfortable in a soft boot. Do your feet a favor. And if you are going to Baxter State Park or any long um, flat tour, get a backcountry Nordic ski in the S-Bound series. Next up is the Overhauled Transalp Series. Fisher gave these skis some much needed love. They now come in a 90 underfoot or an 82 underfoot in both carbon, non-carbon, and men's and women's colorways. They've also added a cheaper non-carbon 82 version. I pair these skis up with ultra lightweight bindings. I like the Speed Turn or Speed Light. Either is a great option. You can also use these skis for schema races. Some of my most memorable days with the ski last winter were definitely those longer days, those tours deep into the backcountry where weight became an issue. These really excelled on the uphill and they still maintain performance on the downhill. With a lightweight binding and a lightweight ski, you just can't charge the same way you, you'd be able to on some of the heavier skis. That said, most of the time in the backcountry, I'm mitigating risk, I'm making shorter turns, I'm going a little bit slower anyway where stability isn't as much of an issue. I'm really happy that Fisher's finally done some work on these skis, and if you are looking for the ultimate backcountry specific ski, this is probably gonna be it. Now, if you ask me, should you be getting this ski versus the Hannibal, that's a tough question. 96 underfoot is, is different enough from 90 or 82 underfoot that you're gonna see a little bit of a difference, but it's completely gonna be up to you. I found that it really came to what binding do you put on the ski. And for me, I have ultra lightweight set up with these, with the, with the speed lights. And with my Hannibals, I have the Tour Classic. That's the Radical 2.0. It's a little heavier binding with an integrated brake. And they just, they're two different skis when you have them um, set up differently like that. 
So these are gonna be more of my mission skis where my Hannibals are just my day-to-day -day touring skis. Lastly, we have the updated Alp Attack, yellow, yellow, yellow. Really the same ski here, not much difference. They've added a carbon weave, the Carbon Tex weave, which will hopefully help with dampening. Other than that, I only skied these once last winter. Very sharp, out of the box, which was excellent for the Tuckerman Inferno. But other than that, I, you know, I'm imagining that they're gonna be very similar to last year's model. I'll wrap it up by going over a couple of the boots for next season. Here we have the Traverse non-carbon, a little cheaper entry point, $100 less than the Traverse carbon. New colorways to match your Transalp skis. These are slightly heavier than the carbon version. And while the shell is not heavier, it's actually the liner that's a little heavier. This is a great backcountry specific boot. It can also handle some schema racing, but ultimately it's been the most comfortable boot that I've tried and can drive the Hannibal Transalp or Alp Attack ski perfectly. And lastly, we have the Fisher Ranger Free. This is Fisher's one boot does everything. It's an excellent ski boot. For an Alpine boot, just specifically skiing resorts, this is, an, this is a great option. You've got four buckles, power strap, and a traditional Alpine liner. This is a 130 flex, Gorilla Mid plastic. You've also got Vibram Grip Walk soles. On the sides, you'll notice one of the biggest features is the walk ski lever. And this is an internal mechanism for your lockout. So this, this boot at the resort, it's amazing. Super comfortable. I've raced my beer league Alpine races in it, done a bunch of free riding. When it comes to touring though, it's in that all mountain touring boot class. It's just over 1500 grams on the stock size, but you do sacrifice a lot of range of motion. You've got with the four buckle design, your buckles often smash each other. So you can't really skin up that steep terrain. It's also, you know, 50% heavier than the Traverse Carbon. But this is the boot that you'll need if you want to ski the high performance backcountry ski. I'll do a whole nother review on this boot, but if you are a resort skier that wants to start doing a little bit of backcountry, having that um, tech binding compatibility is huge. This is a good starter boot for someone getting into backcountry or doesn't have the budget for both. But if your focus is going to be backcountry, you're going to be way better off getting a backcountry specific boot like the Traverse. So that's all I've got. Not a ton of updates, but a few really key ones there. Any questions, definitely ask, and thanks for watching.